in America. But equally, um, <laughs> what, what's this preparing for your next exam today? Tell us a little bit about the, the, the sort of motivation <clears throat> behind this, and then we can get into the detail. Hi, Stuart. Um, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my first time on Instagram. So hoping this, uh, hoping you can hear me loud and clear. Yeah, I can hear you brilliantly. Fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as Stuart says, my name is uh, John Cunningham and I'm the regional head of education for Europe and Americas at ACCA. Uh, sometimes I think that's the longest job title in ACCA. Um, and in essence, I've got a fantastic job. My job, Stuart, is to help students pass the exams. It's as simple as that. Um, across the Europe and Americas region. Um, for ACCA, that's a region we've got about 110,000 students who are sitting exams across that region, and it spans UK, Ireland, uh, much of Central and Western Europe, um, and then across the pond over to the Caribbean, the US and Canada where almost invariably their weather is much better. But I'm based in London, you can probably tell by the accents, and um, yeah, with ACCA about four years now. Okay, good. Now, um, students can get their exams in the diary, but you want to talk today about the sort of almost like a, a possible inertia that might sort of like, oh, this is something today about people perhaps not wanting to get back to work, even though they can back to work. There may be something about students not wanting to get back to doing exams and so you've got some tips and hints um around that and and i think we're going to sort of split into two one around the preparation the the idea of good preparation and, and then um about the material so do, do you want to just tell us a little bit maybe about good preparation what what sort of things can yeah, students be doing now to get ready i suppose the first thing to recognize is covid no matter where you are in the world where you are across my patch, Europe and Americas, uh, has been hugely disruptive. And students face this challenge now, don't they, of, well, gosh, given that my life, my whole environment, my working pattern, my social, my friends, family, everything has been affected by this. How do I get things back on track? Mm -hmm. um, and so, as you say, one of the first areas I think students have to think about is is really coming up, and it's not rocket science, but coming up with a plan. Yeah. So given that we understand that turbulent environment we've been through, um, what, what's your plan? Uh, and that would be my first step for all students, particularly coming out of COVID. What's your plan going forward? Um, uh, and realistically, what's your target date for sitting your next exam? Uh, and really think that piece through. Uh, we've seen most exam bodies have had exam disruption. Um, June exams, almost across the globe, maybe for ACCA with the exception of China, have all been disrupted and June exams haven't gone ahead. Um, we're seeing though a, uh, a return to a situation where exams can operate, um, be that in center exams run in physical locations, or many bodies like ACCA uh, have, uh, we call remote invigilation options where you can effectively take exams at home. So in light of that, the opportunity now is opening up to take, a, take your assessment again. Um, got to think about what's your plan as your starting point, which, and I would almost work backwards from that plan. So if you're thinking the next exam diet for ACCA is September, oh, fantastic. Um, We've got a few months between now and then. Um, what's your plan between those few months to get yourself organised if that's when you're taking your next exam? Yeah, and I think, John, you used to, I, I, when we spoke before, you used a term which I thought was really quite powerful, which is, that you, is mentally commit, which is almost like that January commitment, isn't it, that you're going to get fit this year? It's that sort of a... You know, you can put the date in the diary, you can book the exam. Those are all sort of things you can do. But there is this mindset shift that says, yeah, now let's sort of, let's mentally commit to this. Yeah, and, and commitment is so important. So once you've worked out in your own mind, let's say you've worked out September, I'm going to do this. It's a little bit like, my wife will tell you, it's a little bit like going to the gym. Bring you know, it you've, got to, you've got to buy the membership or you're never going. Yeah. And that's the starting point. So as you say, the uh, first thing, mentally commit, um, 
When are you taking that next exam? Uh, and then work backwards on your plan. So step by step, okay. By mentally commit, maybe for an exam, it means get your entry in. Uh, ACCA, uh, uh, we've been open for months. I think all the exam bodies have. Um, and I would say that's a good one mentally to say, put your exam entry in, put a marker in, know which exam you're taking. And that's a commitment. Yeah. Um, and then work backwards from that. Okay. So what do I need to do to, um, to reasonably prepare for that um, next exam? Um, now, ACCA, we've got something we like to showcase. We call it the study planner template. It's not a terribly effective name, um, but it's a great, a great new tool that we've got on the ACCA website. And if you're with another body, um, SEMA, ICAW, etc., I'm sure they'll have versions of this. Um, but we've got a great uh, planner, which allows you to go through how many weeks are you allowing yourself to prepare for the exam. Plan, mentally commit, get your exam entry in. The next thing you should be thinking about uh, is, of course, expert tuition. Uh, in the case of ACCA, our qualifications, the top tier is, in the UK, we would call it level seven. Um, in, in layman's terms, that's master's degree level. Uh, the qualifications are difficult. Let's not beat about it. Uh, and uh, there are some students who choose to self-study, choose to buy the books. And there are some students who do very well down that route. Uh, and congratulations to them. I think it's the difficult way to, to learn and to study. Uh, and not just because Kaplan have invited me along here today. I, I really think, and I see through data, my, my role, I spend a lot of time looking at data, I mentioned those 110,000 students, uh, I look at who fares the best in different subjects and what have been their modes, their way of, of learning, what are the trends, what are the attributes of those students who are successful and less successful. And very clearly for me, if you're studying through uh, a, a really good quality tuition provider, uh, and in ACCA's case, we would particularly encourage you to go to a platinum learning provider. That's our top tier. Um, we see automatically the pass rates are something in the region in the UK of 20% higher than those mm -hmm. students who, who choose to self-study. So we, we've got the data and we've got the figures. So you're mentally committing, you're entering for your exam, you're putting a plan together, you've got expert tuition. Um, I'm sorry, Stuart, I'm, ab I'm about to go on a monologue there. Did you have anything you wanted to say? No, no, no. I was just going to say, well, well thank you. It's, it's always very nice to, to hear that. But I think it is, I think, it, it, I think your point about it being, these are difficult exams, aren't they? And um, anything that, that has got some degree of support or coaching along its side. So look, there's the content, and there are many ways that students can, can take on board the content. But it is that discipline that you get from tuition provider colleges universe anybody like that, that that sort of you know it's not the content that sometimes makes the difference it's that it's that ability to stick with it when the going gets tough so so, so, so the other thing I, I i thought about Stuart, when i was coming on today was um risk categories um we're all a bit risk averse aren't we at this this time particularly around covid um yeah. Accountancy exam boards, we're no difficult, different. Um, so we do look at, at you know, at, at risk and uh, we do profile those students who uh, tend to find it more difficult to get through the uh, qualification. Um, and there are a few things I thought I'd share with you today in terms of, um, well, when do we see, what are the trends that we see when students start to wobble um, right. and uh, are at risk of falling off that journey to getting qualified? Um, and there's a few telltales. We notice if students have missed a few exams, it's quite difficult to get back on. Again, coming back to my gym analogy, if you allow yourself, well, this week I won't go. I'm really busy at work. And next week, oh, do you know what? There's a lot going on and I've got a birthday coming up and I've got something else coming up. By week three, what are the likelihood I'm going back to the gym? Mm. And it's really the same with um, study and with uh, exams. Uh, and I come back to that thing learning is a habit and make sure you get yourself in the habit and be quite straight with yourself that you know if you're going to hit your ambition to get qualified you want to be the qualified accountant okay i'm going to need to set aside uh, some time for it but certainly if we see students miss mm. one exam session fine 
when it tends to be two exam sessions or more, that's when we see a danger that um, fewer and fewer, and the longer it goes, of course, the less likely you are to, to kind of get back on with it. So two exam sessions is, is certainly something we're looking at. Um, we notice, of course, <clears throat> On the journey for ACCA, um, there are 13 examinations along the way. And let's be honest, it would be pretty impressive, pretty amazing for you to pass every one of those exams first time round. Mm. So you're going to fail and failing is OK mm. because most students do that. Um, but we do notice, you know, Whilst it's easy to say that, and maybe easy for me to say that, um, we do notice that students who, once they fail an exam, or they've got a history maybe where they failed a few, uh, again, it's really, it's too easy to think, gosh, am I cut out for this? Am I really built to get through this qualification? Um, and that's another sign that we see start to wobble. wobble. So I'll talk in a few, a few minutes, I think, a little bit about, um, about resilience, but you know, it's almost a bit of a cliche, but it's so important um, with exams to, um, uh, to to ensure that you've got that bounce back ability, if there is such a word, uh, once you've failed an exam. Um, and another thing that gives us uh, you know, some, some warning signs are students that are self-studying, um, trying to buy the books, go to libraries um, and get through the qualification on their own. Uh, it's so important to be part of a group, part of a cohort, to have um, expert tuition, absolutely, people that you can reach out to, um, but also other people alongside you that are studying. Build a bit, form your links, have a community. Um, where possible, get yourself in a cohort and lean on each other. That community where, uh, again, cliche, you're all in it together, yeah. um, is, is really important for making progress. Yeah, and one thing that um, I think is quite interesting about that, I, I think that's, it's worth we've had a lot of conversations about internally within Kaplan really is when students are studying online, that that is such a, it's such an intangible aspect, that part of having other people to lean on. And it all does sound a little bit woolly as to what it means, but it's kind of like one of those things that, you know, when you've got it, but the yeah. idea of putting it in place and saying, well, what do I do? Just phone somebody up and talk to them. Like I'm talking to you now and you, you have a stunted conversation and, it's a it's a human attribute that, that that really is quite important, isn't it? John, can I can I just move on? I know that, and I think it takes us into this a little bit, doesn't it? That um, I know before you talked about um, mindset and the importance of of like the well being side. But what what are the things? Because it links to that, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it it, it does. P particularly important, Stuart. Let's not underestimate COVID. Um, I can't, I almost can't believe that anyone hasn't been affected in some way by COVID. Um, and I do think it's, it's really important to recognize that. Um, and it's okay for us to have been affected by it. Um, I don't know about, f f for me, I've been working at home now for three, where is it? Getting on for four months. I find the days roll into the weekends, roll into the days. Um, and some days, really don't know what day of the week it is. Um, so it, it, it requires, I guess, where I'm heading to is, this has been a disruptive, it's been a very unsettling time for us all. Um, and it's really tested our resilience and adaptability. Um, and, and they're critical. So where I'm, I guess where I'm going with this is, it's so important, therefore, to be balanced with your learning and to be kind to yourself in a way uh, that... You know, I talked earlier about setting that plan. Um, be realistic about it, though. There's no good, you know, my, my gym analogy. There's no good John saying, well, actually, next week I'm going to the gym seven days a week. Um, much as my wife would love me to do that, <laughs> it's probably a bit unrealistic. So I think the importance is, is balance. Um, absolutely. Get your ambition going again. You want to resume your studies. Um, be realistic and be kind to yourself. Um, and set yourself some check-in points just to reflect, how's this going? Am I on track? What needs, to, what needs to change? Maybe have an informal chat with your tuition provider, your tutor. Do you feel, how do you feel I'm getting on? Um, all of those things, I think, just help to kind of ground you. Yeah, and uh, there was, um, I, I think we, sh we should look at some of the resources and things that you were going to talk about, but just 
Uh, it's right, somebody just flagged up, you know, study tips. I just wanted to sort of just summarise what John's already said. One is, you know, have a plan. Um, as I really like the idea of this, this mental commitment. Um, and when you were talking about those different risk categories, really those were hints of, you know, two failures makes life difficult. Um, you know, look behind the reasons that you, you're having a, you know, a, a difficult study pathway. If you fail two exams, is it because it's just not the right time for you? Is it because you've got to <laughs> devote a lot more time? It might be a difficult work, work situation. And one of the other things that you said when we spoke uh, sort of earlier in the week, John, which I thought was, was quite good, was this idea of, uh, from the motivational point, uh, ask, going back and asking yourself why you started. Well, you know, how does this fit in with your career progression and why did you start ACCA in the first place? Which I, I thought that was really quite powerful. Now, so we've got this, we've got this idea that the exam's in place. We, we are preparing for the exam, but sort of almost picking up on that student's observation there um, you've got some specific resources that certainly ACCA have um, but are, are pretty generic as to what you know what should you really focus on as far as resources uh, when you're you know you're moving up towards the exam yeah okay so a few things on my list let's start with um, syllabus and study guide um, syllabus sounds an obvious place to start but understand the context of what you're learning how do all these pieces, all these components fit together in the subject that you're taking? Don't just pick the book up and go blindly into chapter one is covering this element of it. Um, because it's really important to understand the syllabus and how it, how it builds together. Um, and that will shape how you're going to structure your learning through the program. Um, it's really important. Um, can, I, can I be cheeky, Stuart, and do a little bit of an advert um, ACCA have recently launched um, something we're calling bite-sized videos. So if you right. don't want to read a lot of syllabus and it can be quite a dry document, great. Log into one of these videos, four to six minute shorts that just showcase, look, here's some key elements from that syllabus and study guide. Here's some key things you should know from the examiner um, just to set the scene on the context and how to approach that exam. So, um, so yeah, really important. Number one is that uh, syllabus, uh, as dry as it might be. Um, number two, past exam papers. And again, all the research, the numbers that I crunch shows that students who spend time going through past exam papers perform better in the live exams. Um, I, I preach a lot, Stuart, you'll know this, you've heard from me quite a bit. I, I, I do like to preach, you'll, you'll need to stop me, about exam technique. Yeah. Uh, and maybe ACCA spend a lot of time on exam technique. Um, the reason I, I talk a lot and I preach a lot about exam technique is because I get to speak with chief examiners um, and universally in uh, every subject at every level, the feedback from the chief examiners to a greater or lesser degree is we had a lot of students this session, John, that left marks on the table yeah. because they had poor exam technique. Um, and so you will see that in a lot of the examiner's reports. And sometimes students say to me, well, John, they're very repetitive. They are, because it's consistently an issue. Um, and and if, if you'll forgive me, what, and what do we mean by exam technique? Um, so think about time management. It's a classic, again, that I heard coming out of the March exams. Um, John, we got some fantastic answers to questions one and two, but students had obviously spent so much time on those that by the time question three or four came, they just scribbled bullets as quickly as they could and failed to answer the questions. Um, and that means you're hoping that you've scored maximum marks in question one and two because question three and four were, were probably rather poor. So the time management for me is hugely, uh, hugely important. Yeah, and I know I'm preaching to the converted. No, 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 no. It, it, it is. I, I just, I really like the mark. I think if, you, if students visualise this idea, you know, you're walking away from the exam room and what you were trying to do is lift some of those marks off the table and stick them on the computer screen. You know, it's that sort of a useful sort of metaphor. And I think that the thing is, I know you're going to go on to sort of mock exams, which are a, a sort of a key part of, of of preparation as well it teaches yeah. exam technique because it's very it's very easy you know it just says 
uh, and I've read uh, probably as many examiners' reports as, as you have, John, over the years. And you look at them, and they, you know, they are always the same comments. It's very easy for a student to look at them and just think, "Well, I haven't read anything I don't already know." But it's it's what you we refer to as the knowing doing gap, and it's fine to know that exam, you know, exam techniques are important and time management is important. But you only really get that by practicing with a mock exam. So, you know, one of the, the, the big benefits of doing the mock is not to assess your ability to pass or fail, but to practice, to simulate. And look, if you, if you screw up on a mock exam and you do exactly that you've said, that, you know, i.e. you get through the first two questions and you run out of time on the others, well, that's okay, because it was a mock exam. And I know you, you've made a comment before about mock exams are very expensive sort of ACCA exams are very expensive mock exams if people are using them in that way aren't they yeah yeah, yeah ab absolutely yeah, um so you know that's another area that I preach about the value of mock exams take a mock exam um I'm not particularly signposting Kaplan with this I know Kaplan has a mock exam service but so do a lot of tuition providers um take a mock exam um ACCA of course we've got um we've got all three practice yeah, freely available practice platform with exams pre-populated on there. Go on there, take the exam. Um, the, the thing alongside mocks, though, um, uh, there are a few elements. Be, be serious in the way that you take it. Take it as you would a real exam. Mm. So don't use it with your books there to look up the answers. Mm. It's defeating the purpose a little bit. Take it in full and take it to time so that it's a much more realistic assessment. Um, and the other thing I think is important, submit your mock for marking yes. and assessment. Really important, get feed, but not just the mark, get feedback on how you performed in that exam. And that's where, that's the beauty of take the mock, submit it to Kaplan or a tuition provider, get them to mark it, tell you how you did on it. Because as you say, doing that with the ACCA, um, and then you get your, your your mark. It's a very expensive mock if that's how you're using it. So the importance of mocks, making sure you've got time in that planner that we talked about right at the start. Put in your plan. I'm going to take one mock, two mock, and I'm going to allow time to submit them to somebody, get them to mark it, and some time once I've got that feedback to be able to make some changes or do some further tuition. Mm -hmm. And that's a great springboard to success then. Yeah, and I know, and it is, you know, it's very easy to send it to somebody, but just, just as a, a general sort of comment, if you can get a mock exam in some shape or form, or you can get one from professional bodies, and, and as hard as this might sound, because when you're a student, you don't consider yourself to have the level of expertise, but if you've got a, a friend or a colleague or a study buddy that you could send your answer to, yeah, we've always got to find ways <laughs> of doing this as, as effect, cheaply and as effectively as possible. And you will not find, you know, the, the things that you will learn. Look, it's going to take you a long time to mark. Let's say you've got somebody doing an exam, uh, you're doing the same exam and you swap. It doesn't matter that you know what you've done. Um, to actually get the model answer, to take the marking guide, to put yeah. the marks from the marking guide onto the model answer, it's going to take you two hours probably to mark up one question because you're going to have to go through it. You'll feel the respons responsibility, which is what every, doesn't matter how capable you are as a marker and how technically good you are, that you always feel a responsibility to be doing the right thing. You will feel that. And the real interesting thing, you have a go, you mark somebody else's and you'll be brilliant at that yeah. particular thing, won't you? I mean, it, it just is, it's hard sometimes because it takes so long to do. And I think students yeah. perhaps are a bit reluctant to have a go at it. But the value of that, of course, is because at the moment you only know what you know. And yeah. it's, it's really useful as well looking over your shoulder at, so how, does, how did they answer the question? I thought I did a good answer, but I've got nothing to benchmark it against. So suddenly looking at how did, what did someone else write, as you say, really, really good, good tool for learning. Can I just, uh, just a couple of questions that have come up here. One, uh, and I could see Hayley came up before, and I, and I just wanted to acknowledge that, that Hayley, we did see your comment about it being an absolute nightmare. Um, and uh, Dineo's put, well, we can mark them ourselves, which I think was the point we we're making. Um, uh, I'll take this head on. You know, can CIMA attempt ACCA mocks? And, and I think um, the idea that you 
are any markies useful, but the ones that are closer to the assessment methodology of the professional exam is, is probably best because it's at a particularly critical time when you're doing it. It's not like you've got months and months. So if you've got months and months, you can practice as much content as you like. But as you move into this sort of getting ready for the exam, it's, it's a heck of a lot better if you can be using um, an exam because the syllabuses will differ and the language patterns and the questions um, are slightly different. From an educational point of view, y y you can do it, but I wouldn't personally advise it. John, I'm just looking at the clock. Um, uh, we, we've got a, a couple of minutes and just, I just want to summarize that last sort of section. You talked about um, resources and syllabus guides, past papers. Um, I know you're going to say also, and you talked about looking through examiner's reports and the importance um, of mock exams. Um, if I was to put you on the spot and just sort of say, right, you know, in the closing minute or so, what, what tips or two key points would you give uh, that students can take away? What's the most important part? I think the most important part is that first thing about mentally committing. Right. Um, set yourself the target, enter yourself for an exam. If that's September, that's the next big sitting. For ACCA, September is busy already. It's filling up fast. Um, so if you want to get your location, your preferred location, get your entry in soon. Um, but mentally know what your plan is. Um, and the, I suppose the second thing is the bit I always bleat about uh, uh, exam technique. You know, be that time management, you know, reading the question, focusing on the verb that the examiner uses. You know, if they ask you to list something, expect a list. It's going to be a list of bullets. If they ask you to analyze something or justify something or distinguish between, that's what they're expecting for. They're not just giving you a clue. Um, so don't, don't feel that, great, I've seen something in that question line and I'll just regurgitate everything I know about the subject. Use that um, verb, it's critical. Um, yes. So yeah, exam technique in the round, time management. Um, we didn't get time to talk really about computer-based exams. Of course, if you're taking a computer-based exams, spend some time on a keyboard. Make sure that you know the functionality. Um, certainly our spreadsheet is not Excel. Um, and most of the exam boards don't use a genuine version of Excel or Word. So make sure you're familiar with all of that. So yeah, that's such an, I think that, that is such an important, you know, because, and, you know, it's the whole thing about exams techniques, isn't it? Good yeah. students fail exams because of bad exam techniques. Good exam techniques don't make a bad student pass. But, but a good student fails because they haven't got the exam skills. John, time is without us. We saw a quick question there um, about missed it. It was a recording. Uh, um, I've had a note to say this will be on our um, Instagram account in uh, 10 minutes. Um, we also put it on the YouTube channel. Um, ACCA website, full of the resources that John's been talking about. We might blog off the back of this. Um, we're one minute over. John, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on Instagram Live. Thank you. Um, Thanks very much, Stuart. It looked lovely to speak and good luck, everyone. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks now. Cheerio.